Hello everyone, it's Iris here with a process video with my February wild hair kit. If you saw my unboxing, you'll know that I asked Allison for a kit that was good for scrapping travel to the UK. So I got a lot of great muted colors, some greens and uh, tans and a little bit of blue and then they had tons of great textures which will go great with all this architecture over in the UK. So I picked some photos from our couple days in Dublin, Ireland and uh, you saw flashed over there that I did cut some some words so you'll see that back in a second. Here I am just arranging the photos <laughs> and thinking that's what I was tapping my fingers for. I grabbed this cut file from the cut shop. It is technically called Let's Talk Summer. And some of the phrases, there's four phrases, and some of them definitely were summerish, but I grabbed it because it had the phrase go see do, which I've heard some people complain is way overdone, but I love that phrase. I really do. I duplicated the phrase in a few sizes. I wasn't sure what I would use. So I went ahead and uh, grabbed the largest first because one of the samples I saw using this cut file, someone had used the phrase quite big. And I really liked that. But just in case, because I had six photos, that's quite a bit for a one pager. I didn't know if everything would fit. So I did cut it out a couple sizes smaller. Here is the middle one. And I, I don't know, I felt like it didn't have the same, see me there? It didn't have the same impact of the really large. Well, I considered clustering it here around that middle grouping of photos and then everything's sort of overlapping. But when I put the big words on there, it's just popped so much that I, I really felt that it was um, the way to go. And this layout isn't going to have any journaling because it is sort of an overview. The way I have my travel, my travel album set up, I have the each country because I traveled throughout the UK. So this is the Ireland portion. And then each day I have sort of an intro page. This is what's gonna be the intro page to the Dublin. Here I've been going over some backgrounds, the white, was going to be too stark. I knew it was going to be kind of boring for me to just use the white. So I'm sampling a few other off-white uh, and white backgrounds, but with a little bit of design. This one is from the Snap Basics from Simple Stories, and this is what I start off with. It just has a little bit, it's a dot, almost like a grid, and I thought, well, you know, this is about a city. So it felt like that would match pretty well. So here I am placing, fiddling with the placement. I wanted to, I knew I would have to overlap things and I, I really prefer to overlap things anyway. So just moving things around a bit. And uh, I think I will in a second start just putting a little bit adhesive so things don't move around as I'm I'm building up on there but here I get rid of the uh, smaller cut file and <clears throat> excuse me I put in the little inner areas to get the full effect yeah so I really liked how that looks now, I knew I wanted to use some sequins, and I thought originally I'd use it in the background or fill in a couple letters. And then um, I wasn't sure, since it's the words in the photos take up so much space, I wasn't sure how much of the wonderful little, um, not ephemera, but I have a lot of like little cork tags, geotags, and some acrylics and all that. I wasn't sure what would work there. I was just sort of trying things half ha haphazardly. But then I thought, well, let me not worry about that yet. And let me see about filling in those letters. I had gone off to cut the branding strips off the papers. And you can see I have sticky notes on the papers. I've been doing this lately where I write what it is and then I cut the branding strips. So I don't have to keep 
stopping what I'm doing to cut the branding strips as I pick a paper because I go off and cut standing up at a cutting station with my Cutter Pillar Pro. <clears throat> and then I used some Post-it brand cover-up tape, labeling cover-up tape. Got that handy uh, tip from Jennifer McGuire. And I just wrote the letters and now I'm sticking them on the papers as I just audition. The D was one I settled on first. I liked the green down in that line because the photos didn't have any green. You, I don't know if you can see the top right photo. There's a door that's uh, green, painted green, along with the red and the yellow. So I thought I'd bring some green down there. That was the first one I settled on. Here I settled on these three for the SEE. I did not want a green right on top of the green grass. And then I went off to cut. I used the offset function on the Silhouette Studio uh, software. And you can see here that the E and the E fit into the uh, outlines. That was not my intent. When I did the offset, I was you had to offset the outer edge of the letters and the inner edge. And then I had to pick that the right ones and separate them out to cut. And I uh, miscalculated which ones I was picking uh, while I was doing that on some of these. So the G came out what I wanted, which it overlaps under that outline a bit. And then I, f I forgot to cut the O's. So here I, you saw me just hand cut the O out because I needed something to fill the, to back the sequence. Now, the way I just chose which ones to do sequence in was you see that round metallic bronze structure in the middle. Well, I noticed that I have two O's and they, that structure is metallic and sparkly and the sequins are sparkly. So I thought, let me fill the O's with, with the sequins. So off camera, I, I cut this out, but you know, I went and had the silhouette cut, cameo cut the O's out for me. After, after all. And here I am just filling in all the black outlines. So I, I considered cutting the cut file out of white. Generally I do cut out cut files out of white, but I didn't think it would have enough contrast with the what I wanted to do. And then I had seen a sample of someone's layout using this cut file and they did black and I really felt that that was really impactful. So that's how I chose to do it with black as well. And then some of these letters, like I said, I miscalculated which off, which lines to cut when I um, was doing it. So the E and the E fit perfectly inside the outlines and therefore I couldn't glue them down. So I'm using some washi to tape that down. Now I considered cutting some of this process out of the video, but I thought, okay, the people who've never, you know, admire cut files that have never done them, never backed them, especially something complex with like an inner and an outer outline. I thought, well, you know what? I'm just going to let things be real here and show you that it takes a while. This is sped up about four times. So it takes a while and especially with something complex. So the S, it turned out I cut a uh, an S that was actually too small for even the the um, the space. So you know what? Rather than go back to the software, I just hand cut that one because it didn't have like an inner portion. I thought oh, I'll just do that one. I've been using the Tombow Mono Multi to do this, and I have to be honest, I did not like that glue. Maybe it's just glue in general. I'm using I'm used to using um, a tape runner and. These are thin, so I wanted to use the white glue, but it got on my fingers and it was sticking to everything. And I had to keep like wiping my hands. I think I cut out most of the wiping my hands, but you'll see me sometimes just sort of like rub my fingers together trying to get the glue off. Um, yeah, it was kind of messy. So I'm going to have to investigate a different way to do that. If anyone has any tips for... Um, 
either speeding up the process of lining cut files or the glues to use, that sort of thing, please let me know. <laughs> I can use that tip. I use the Tim Holtz scissors. This is the original size. I do have the really big one and I love both. And I think I'm going to get the really teeny size because for something like this, I could use that. <laughs> I think it would make this even a little easier. So here I am getting, I had a I had to outline the inner parts of the E's to cut them out. And actually that didn't work. That wasn't too bad. So maybe next time I won't even bother with the offset function on the um, silhouette software and then just hand cut it all, even though it has like the inner portions because it wasn't too bad. Um, oh, here I'm, I'm trying to glue them down in grouping so I can move them together. And I fiddle with this for a little bit. Uh, this is the score tape. And, you know, I didn't want to put too much because I knew that if I didn't like it, I would have to <laughs> tear them up uh, off again. Um, but I did put a little bit to keep each grouping together as I moved them around. Oh, here, you know, I, I went... It moved everything to the other side just in case, just to see what it would look like. And in the end, I went with my original gut feeling of putting the go and the do towards the left and the C towards the right, and then, you know, have the picture staggered like this. And because I have quite a bit of photos and these words take up so much space, I, I I wanted to overlap it, so here I am just trying to figure out exactly where they're going to overlap. Not more tape. I think I yeah I moved the go a little bit higher just so I can overlap it even more, and this is going to end up in somewhat like a zigzag pattern. You see the the if you it's like an, a mirror image of a Z. <laughs> So even though it reads go, see, do from left to right, I sort of zigzagged it from right top to left bottom. And um, I think this is the next day and I'm ready to do the sequence. Now this is another part that was quite a long process. I grabbed this, this little thing. Hold on, let me go find it. I forgot in my notes to write down what this is. I bought the Jewel Picker by Marvie, and that was another Jennifer McGuire. I get all my great tips from Jennifer McGuire. <laughs> Between her and Tracy Banks. <laughs> um, so this Marvie Jewel Picker has two kind of somewhat sticky sides. One's, uh, they, they sell it in different versions, but I got the one that's double ended and one is thinner and one is bigger and uh, it does work really well for picking up the sequins so you've seen me here just sort of sprinkle some sequins and after I put glue all over the place sprinkle some and now I'm picking some up and that really does work one problem I have though is that the glue would get on it and then it would it would stick to the seek it would pick up the sequin but then it wouldn't let it go because of the glue the sticky stuff on the picker is um it's almost like a silicone, but uh, so I, I recommend it for working with sequins. I just don't recommend this glue. <laughs> I need a different process with the glue. So that was taking a long time and this is sped up quite a bit. I think this is sped up even more like six times or eight times than the, the other portion. Um, and in the end, I just sprinkled them all to my on my tabletop and then shoved it upside down with the glue because it was just taking forever. And then I had to sort of push in the sequins that were along the edges and then put glue in to fill in the spaces. So by this point, uh, it was starting to get, it was starting to look kind of like what I thought it would, it should, you know, but uh, just, there's a lot of white. There's an iridescent clear and white in addition to an iridescent emerald green, which is so lovely because it's like emerald green and 
like a violet. Uh, that one, I, I love that color. And that was sort of like an impetus for picking Dublin <laughs> to scrap on this one because it also has little gold stars. And I thought, oh, emerald green and gold stars. I like that for, you know, Ireland. Like a pot at the end of the rainbow or something. But the white and clear weren't giving this much you know, there was just a lot of white space. So in retrospect, I would I I would have picked a colored cardstock to put behind the oh, the sequins. Maybe blue. I'm not sure. But the white was just too white for me. So here I am. Um I used a little Tim Holtz like all as well. Uh I, I was using it to move things around because I didn't want it to pick up the sequins. I was just trying to move the sequins. And I had so much glue on my fingers. So now I'm putting down the outline. I I didn't I I filled the background with sequins before I put the outline on because I didn't want it to overlap the outline. And then here is some more filling in of circles or blank spaces. So you can see, oh, one of the reasons I didn't like this glue besides that it's just got all over my fingers is that it does not dry matte. So there's going to be some shiny parts in my black outlines. But you know what? Once you put it in a page protector, you don't really notice it because the page protector is all shiny. Well, there I am trying to get the glue off my fingers. I did use a lot of wet wipes doing this. But here you go. I think I'm finally happy with that and I'm going to spare you filling in the other rest the other one. But when I was recording and I turn off and turn off, I accidentally did not hit record. I thought I hit the record button enough and since my phone is way up high and I just kind of I usually get on a stool and stand up to look and I didn't this time and it for <laughs> sure enough it wasn't recording so here's what you missed I had done some mist <laughs> in I have a the Heidi swap color shining gold the glimmer mist from tattered angels in bronze and then that's Mr. Huey's which is an opaque one in leaf green and then what I did is the each letter, that little period at the end. And so I used it to house some flare. And those are from a flare for buttons that came in the kit. Oh, by the way, that sequin mix was an exclusive mix for the Wild Hair Kit Club from Spiegel Mon Scraps. It didn't have a name on there. It just says exclusively designed. Um, and then what you saw me do here was just add more of those three mists. And I added in nestles where all of the group of photos are. I just added a little cork geotag, just a little cute additional thing. So I didn't end up using much of my um, embellishments because the go see do is such a big portion. Oh, and then I changed out the background paper to the Dear Lizzie because I, I felt that that one had kind of gave it a little more structure with the lines to go across each line of of the um, title and photos. But then um, the tilting of the photos and how it zigzags just kind of adds some playfulness. I don't think the camera captures that shine as well as I'd like. Here are some still photos. Thank you for hanging out with me on this process video. Hopefully it wasn't too long and you got some uh, inspiration and I will see you here next time. Thank you.